10 minute daily reality check warren moon yeah all right warren moon is the newest one every single day mr brett parker there is another man who is sexually harassing another woman tonight when i got home it's now warren moon warren moon now is taking a leave of absence from the seattle seahawks radio station he denies the allegations of course he does they all deny the allegations well, any, any, now any woman who ever got in bed with a celebrity is claiming sexual harassment. Yes. Right? Like, I'm sorry, if you were, I, I understand sometimes men are totally inappropriate and they force themselves on you in very bad ways. And that is awful. And that is sexual harassment. And sometimes that's even rape. But I got to think that some of these women knew exactly what was going on when it was going on. And they could have just walked out the door. You know, probably all the time or most of the time, you know, it it is, it's unreal. And and I'm just, I've talked about it and talked about it and talked about it. And I'm just kind of sick of talking about it because it's just every day it's another person, you know, and I called it the year of the tattletale the other day. And I thought it was really great that maybe, you know, and this is something I talked about with Eddie the other day on the show, you know, maybe these men you know, will stop taking advantage of women. Maybe these women will stop throwing themselves at men. You know, maybe the women that were actual victims, real victims that had psychological trauma, maybe they'll actually step, stand up for themselves and get help right away. I mean, it's just such a, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it because I truly believe today's show is about something entirely different. Okay. It's called The Universe is Always Watching. Okay. Okay. You and I have talked about you and I have talked about this principle a lot. There's some unscrupulous people that we know, I'm not going to mention them by name, love to, love to, you know what? I'd love to publicly call them out. I really would. Shit. It's the year of the tattletale. Why can't I publicly call out somebody who I think is a complete low life, trashy person? Why can't I do it? It's the year of the tattletale. Why can't I just on the podcast today? Why can't I out the person that I think is one of the lowest forms of human beings alive? Why can't I use their name? Why can't I out them? You know why? Because I have something called integrity. Because I believe the universe is always watching. So there's this person that I know that's been doing some unscrupulous things, lying through their teeth on a daily basis. They got caught with their hand in the cookie jar. They got hit there caught with a hand in their cookie jar trying to rip off the California government. Mm-hmm. Not exactly somebody I really would like to be in a situation owing money to, because that's the interest clock. You know, California government or the IRS will tell you to pay something by December the 14th, and, and they fucking mean it, you know. And the interest that compiles after that is unreal. Not only that, they don't really like when somebody does something you know, it kind of red flags you for taxes for the remainder of the time that they know that you're a cookie jar stealer. So it was interesting when I found this out today, I started laughing and I was thinking to myself, you know, the universe is really always watching because we tend to, as human beings, want to get even with somebody. Somebody screws us over. We want to try to find a way to get even with them. But in reality, as you know, and I know, sometimes it's not you getting even with them. Sometimes they're going to get even with so many different other sources are going to come back at them. What do you, what do you think about that? Because you, you and I have had long talks about that. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the, another way of saying it is what goes around comes around, right? Like nobody gets away with it. You don't get away with anything, right? Like you think you're going to get something over on somebody. That shit is going to come back and bite you in the ass someday. It's a perfect story. A uh, quick story about, you know, one of our favorite subjects is my mother, right? My mother, Barbara Parker, infamous in Westchester County and New York City in the in the sixties and seventies. She drove into the New York City into New York City every day, and she didn't pay the toll for ten cents, right? She oh, God, and she flipped them the bird, right? Because she thought, "Oh, I'm saying screw you to the establishment." Wait, I'm wait, on the Henry Hudson Bridge? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that toll, right? I know that toll. Okay, go ahead. Sure. So every day she blew past the toll, right? And she thought it was hilarious. And she thought she was a real fucking rebel, right? And she was sticking it to the man. Well, five years later, they pulled her over in that spot. 
And she said, oh, well, I, I must have thrown the money and it didn't land and blah, blah, blah. And the, uh, and the cop looked at her and he said, Mrs. Parker, we've been waiting for you. Well, guess what? They caught her blowing through one toll and they fined her $5,000. That's a lot of dimes. Right? Wow. And I know that it's so funny. I remember that toll. That was the old basket toll yep. that you drove down the Henry Hudson to the uh, West Side Highway, right? Going through literally Riverdale. And you would go and like, I remember asking my father all the time as a kid, hey, dad, can I do a hook shot? Right. You know, and like my dad would do the same thing. Like he'd try to go through as fast. Everybody would try to go through as fast as they can as they threw the quarter in there or the dime in there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it went in, sometimes it didn't go out. And it's interesting, too, because in New York, a lot of those toll booth guys were taking half for the New York state, half for them too. remember all those. uh, I think in the 70s and 80s, they were getting nailed for living lavish lifestyles, you know, you know, just collecting toll money from people. So. It's so true. You were never going to get over on anybody. I remember, I remember I made an investment years and years and years ago, and I lost it. And it was the same money, the same dollar amount that I lost with somebody who invested in me in my bar, one of my first business ventures. And I kind of scratched my head. And instead of getting angry, I kind of looked at myself and go, well, I had that coming to me. <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, I literally had that coming to me. So you're never going to get over on somebody. Mm-mm. It's just, you're not going to do it. And there's so many dishonest people. And something that I've, I've talked about a lot is that these dishonest fucking people are, they have kids and their kids see the dishonesty mm-hmm. because it's not just the big things they're doing. It's the little things they do too. And I, I remember somebody I know, And it should have been a warning sign. I was dating them. And they were telling me about the dishonest things their mother did with credit card companies, right? Their mother was constantly getting over on credit card companies, taking out credit cards in other people's names and literally cashing checks and all this other stuff, right? And I remember in the first couple of weeks of dating, she's like, yeah, my mom did this, da-da-da. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, you know, warning sign, warning, 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 right? And sure enough, that same person cashes checks that aren't made out for them. It's like they learn that. So these dishonest people have children. And it's a scary thing to realize that the kids are going to be taught this happens. Yeah, you know, it's going to bite you in the ass no matter what you do, even if you, you know, no matter what you do. Right. It's just going to there's no such thing as a free ride. There's no such thing as a free lunch. You can't get over on anybody especially not the government. I mean, it's just, you know, the universe is watching, karma's a bitch, you know, whatever you want to call it, you're not going to get away with anything. And that's why people who, they say the longest way to get there is a shortcut, right? People who think they're going to take a shortcut. That's another thing. It's just like this thing, right? It's not, it's not, shortcuts aren't dishonest, but in a way they are. Because they're like, oh, I'm going to do less than everybody else does and I'm going to get to the same place. Well, probably not. Shortcuts tend to take a lot longer than doing it the fucking right way. Yeah, it's interesting. But what is this mentality? Why do people have, is it a sense of entitlement that people have? I mean, what exactly, you know, the person that I'd love to out on the podcast, you know, they walk around with a sense of entitlement. They think that the world owes them things. They're bitter about what happened to them in their life. But where does that come from? You know, does it come from bad upbringing? It's one of the seven clinical signs of narcissistic personality disorder. I'm not saying that anybody involved in this conversation has that, but certainly people who, and that's a very loose popular term that's thrown around a lot these days, right? Narcissist, oh, they're a narcissist. This one's a narcissist. People who have big egos are called narcissists. But the true clinical definition of a narcissist, one of the seven characteristics is They feel a sense of entitlement that the world owes them something that they should be doing less than other people for the same thing. What are the other, I mean, because I know people, we've thrown that term around a lot. What are the other six? What are the other traits? Uh, I don't have the thing of the list in front of me, but uh, grandiose, um, you know, like uh, they're very, you know, they're, they're grandiose. They are usually outgoing. um, Although there's the introverted narcissist, um, they are, uh, uh, they're very, very, they, they're very outgoing. Um, 
I, I don't I don't remember that, but I don't remember them all. But I, I can look it up. Yeah, no, it's really interesting because they are they are the hardest, most difficult people to deal with. You know, they truly believe the world owes them. And, you know, and I, I've I've only had I've had a few dealings with them. You know, one person I was with for a number of years was a complete covert narcissist, you know, very sweet and very caring and very nice to people. But woo, man, behind the scenes, just a complete narcissist in every way, shape and form. I mean, you know, wow. you, can ne- you can never get a word edgewise. I think my father might have had. My father definitely had narcissistic tendencies and so forth, you know, I mean, in, in certain ways, because um, he had that sense of entitlement as well. My grandmother had that sense of entitlement, you know, and well, it's something, but yeah, there's an, there's an arrogance to them and thing, you know, there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a real arrogance to them. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? I can't remember. Uh, oh, well, the interesting thing about being in a relationship with a narcissist is that you're both in love with the same person. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's so true. I call them the me, me, me's. me, 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 you know, and the only way to deal with a narcissist is snarky one sentence remarks back at them, you know, because narcissists love to try to control everything. You know, they control their children, their children are their pawns. You know, mm-hmm. they have to control a man in a relationship or a woman in a relationship you know, they are very charming the first couple of months and then the, cra- and then the, you know, you start seeing the cracks in their personality and then they, you know, they always, they're the one word wonders. They harp on one word. They, you could talk to them for 10 minutes. They're just listening to the one word that they can attack you for the next three hours on. You know, mm. they don't hear anything at all. They're just looking to spin and spin and spin. But I'll tell you something, after dealing with one in a relationship, never again. I mean, never again. They're a nightmare. I mean, they're an absolute nightmare. And and the greatest thing is when you're dealing with them and you're no longer with them and you have to talk to them, you know, about certain things, if you're in a business relationship or a co-parenting relationship, it's wonderful to just one line, one word them, you know, and literally just when they try to manipulate or control you, you know, you just look at them and just literally tell them to go fuck off and one way or the other, right? And they just, they just keep engaging and engaging and engaging. And they try to twist and turn. They like to use your name. They're, they're good at using your name. Like, oh, really, Brett, do you feel that way? <laughs> right? You know, it's like they're fucking hilarious. And once you see through them, it, it's, they're the weakest form of human beings that I've ever met. Exactly what I was going to say. Once you see through them, once you know who you're dealing with, then it's like game on, like, you can just fuck with them and fuck with them and fuck with them because they're so easy. They're so, because they're so predictable, right? You know exactly what they're going to do and you can, you can anticipate it and you agitate it and just drive them fucking crazy. Oh yeah. I mean, they're, they're great to agitate. I mean, it's hilarious. I mean, I was dealing with a narcissist the other day and I was on the phone with a friend of mine and the text came in and I, I literally, it was Greg. I was laying on the phone with Greg and I said, oh man, I said, I got a narcissist text, right? You know, we make jokes about it. And I said, I said, I said, what you do? He goes, agitate it a little bit. Let's just turn the water up a little bit. It's like turning on the washing machine and just to agitate it, right? So, you know, you send like that one sentence that you know they're just going to react to. And sure enough, they are the fastest text bubblers ever coming back at you. The minute they're agitated, they don't even let a text sit for five seconds. You can see the little squirrely bubble thing come back and you're like, it's like, whoa, game on. And you can feel, you can literally feel, you know, their tension and their anxiety, but they enjoy it. It's, they love confrontation. Well, yeah, because the thought, they, they, the, the text bubble is so fast because just the thought, if they think that you even think of blaming them for something, they are going to try to shut you down so fast because they can't bear the thought of somebody trying to put something on them. I know it's so scary. They can't stand the fact that somebody's putting something on because they take no responsibility. And that's something else too. For those of you that are dating or getting into business with a narcissist, if you're with somebody for 90 days and they've taken no responsibility for anything for 90 days, get the fuck out of that relationship, that friendship, that love relationship, that business relationship, because they will not take responsibility for anything. Because I know 
in the first 90 days of any relationship I have, I've apologized at least five or six times. I mean, because I'm a human being. I fuck up. I do things, you know, and, and I admit it. And I look for that. That's a big trait that I look for in relationships now is I almost want something to happen over the first 90 days so I can hear the word, gee, I'm really sorry, babe. I fucking just did not mean that, you know, or holy shit, man, you're right. I should have listened more narcissist are you kidding me the second i remember when i was in a relationship with the narcissist i think i was four weeks in and something was bothering me and i remember i said it to them and, and they looked at me and go you don't go there i could go there too and i'm thinking like what the fuck what the hell is this it's like i didn't know i've never dated them i mean i don't like i said i only had one oh well, that's not true i had a couple of mini narcissists after the big narcissist but once you've had the big narcissist, it's like the mini ones are nothing. They're just booty. They're just booty call narcissists at that point. Yeah, Rob. Uh, and actually, the key, one of the keys to to really, really being free in in all your relationships, whether it's a friendship, a marriage, a love relationship, whatever, is taking responsibility for everything. It doesn't mean that you blame yourself, but you 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 really, really take responsibility and. For yourself because that's all you can be responsible for and you know so many people that we know and work with you know they're just caught up in blame and blame is just like it's what i think what blame really is is struggling against the present which of course you know is just the worst possible thing you can do when you're blaming somebody for something that happened it's just like okay look it happened Right there was a there was an event. Take responsibility for yourself and move on. So that whole blame thing really irks me. You know, and that's how we're going to end it. So, Mr. Parker, you have a new website. And I do, and there's a quiz they can take. So, where Absolutely. is it? And how can they find you? A goodparker.com. It's a play on words. A good Parker, because my mother once called my father a good Parker. And that's right, it was Parker. That's how they got the name. It was a Russian name. And she said, Stanley, you're such a good Parker. That is our new last name. Stanley shook his head. That was the last thing he ever said to your mother. It's the last words I've ever heard out of his mouth as well, too. And I wasn't even born yet. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. 10-minute daily reality check out. Don't play the blame game. And fuck narcissists. Man, they suck. They suck.